Good evening, everyone. I'm here to talk about government accounting. This is about the most boring thing on earth, so you'll be pleased to know I'm here to take you into a good night's sleep. My student, you're lucky, you only have to deal with this for five minutes. My students get this for two and a half hours at once a week. When people talk about government accounting and government finance, the one thing that comes to mind almost always is the concept of fraud, waste, and abuse. We always hear this about government. It's become such a staple of our politics that both parties run on this every year, every cycle. And fraud, waste, and abuse is usually exemplified by this example of a hammer. And I saw this on a recent, on a mailing list uh, posting earlier this year, about how the Defense Department spent $30,000 on a common hammer. That's a little unusual. And I think it's probably a bit excessive that they would spend this much on a hammer, especially since the real story is they only spent $600. And even that's not right. They spent $435 on the hammer. But this turned out to actually be a good thing. But this story has gained so much currency that it has become emblematic of fraud, waste, and abuse. In fact, the Washington Times gives out the coveted Golden Hammer Award for the <laughs> most egregious example of government fraud, waste, and abuse. It turns out that what really happened here is that the Defense Department, the United States Navy, was buying a collection of T-34C uh, airplanes, they're trainer aircrafts. And when you buy something like this, you don't get this on Amazon. You don't get this at Walmart. You have to go out and get a contract and have this thing custom built. And everything that happens is custom. And when that happens, the government doesn't just pay for the physical hardware. They also pay for meetings, they pay for engineering, they pay for planning, and they pay for everything else that goes into building that airplane. So while they're getting these airplanes up here, they're also getting all this other stuff that goes along with it. And that costs money. <coughs> Excuse me. That also includes a whole bunch of spare parts and ways to install those spare parts. And what happened is Beechcraft ends up seeing that there's this hammer and a bunch of other stuff. But there's this hammer in particular. What they're like, well, you know, we paid for this with government funds. It rightfully belongs to the government. We're going to send it back to them. And they have to do an overhead calculation to figure out how much money to tack on to this piece of hardware. And this is nothing more than an accounting trick. And they find it's $420 plus the $15 cost of the hammer. So this hammer ends up getting an invoice of $435. And this is investigated by the Packard Commission who goes, you know what, we would have spent that $420 on something else, on, on something else anyway. We had agreed to pay this much for the contract, and all they're doing is allocating this funding. They would have paid for that money either way. Now, I've already explained that hammer, and I'm only halfway through my slides. Meanwhile, in Columbia, <laughs> we, <laughs> we have the Columbia Association which isn't really a government in the traditional sense, but we tend to treat it like one. And that's fine. We elect our representatives to run it, and they run it more or less like a city government. And that works out for most purposes. But that also means we see the same sorts of complaints with it. One of them has to do with how much money things cost. For instance, this is the horse center. Every year we hear about the horse center and how much money it costs the CA. We hear that it loses money. We hear that um, it's a losing proposition and that the CA only funds us for certain people in the community, whereas the vast majority of people don't use it. But this is the budget for the Horse Center right here. And this shows that what we have is a loss of $22,000. First of all, that's not that much in a $65 million budget. But the, almost the entirety of that's depreciation. This is money accounting for the wear and tear on the thing. It's not real money being spent. In fact, we see right here we can highlight it. $15,000 net loss from operations. 29,000 of this also com comes from depreciation. And there's a few thousand dollars more from other things, allocations. We'll get to that in a second. We also have a whole ton of pools in Columbia. These pools are paid for by two sources. Money you pay for through your assessment if you're a Columbia resident, and money you pay for through package plan. Package plan says what you do is you buy access to all of Columbia's facilities, and then they take that money and they allocate it through an allocation strategy across all the different parts of uh, all the different facilities Columbia offers. For here, we have $428,000 coming from package plan to the, uh, to the pools, and another, I can't read it from here, $300,000 going from package plan to tennis. This is an estimate for how much they think, how much value they think people get from these things. It has absolutely no bearing in reality. It's done for accounting purposes. So the question becomes, what does this all mean? When we look at these sort of allocation strategies and appreciation and other accounting things, 
What we wonder is, <clears throat> what we need to do is acknowledge that these things are record-keeping things. And what really happens is, when you hear about some fraud, waste, and abuse, you need to ask yourself, is somebody getting a free hammer out of this deal? Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. <laughs> Tip your servers well and drive safely. Jamie Howard, everyone. <laughs>